lovely day! Hey guys, Jim here. Welcome in once again. Today we're going to be taking a look at another Jack Wolf Knives offering, except this time it's going to be wildly different than everything else that has come before it. This is the brand new Gunslinger Jack, and we're going to take a look at this together and see exactly what makes this so special. Now, you might see the initial profile of this knife and go, oh, well, that looks like the Sharpshooter Jack that was the first model that came out. And you wouldn't be incorrect because this is a gunstock model, just like that was. But unlike every other Jack Wolf knives that has preceded it, this is a locking folder. So it's not a slip joint. And I'm going to be honest with you, I really, I really don't know how I feel about that. Because the thing is this, I own a lot of folders. We have access to a huge amount, an almost infinite amount of folders in varying degrees of quality, um, design nature, and price point. So it's a really, really big ocean. Meanwhile, when Jack Wolf was only putting out slip joints, it was something unique and something special. Because for somebody like me that never, ever, ever cared about any kind of classic design, certainly not any slip joints, the Jack Wolf knives piqued my interest in a way that nothing else ever did. I got excited for them, and every single one that's come out since then, it's been unbelievably exciting for me on every level for every offering. But now they're entering the field where I've played for most of my life, your typical locking style folding knives. Did they execute it well? Does it really hold its own? and make itself special among that sea of folders that are out there. I can safely say yes, however, it doesn't feel as special. Because when I pick up my Vampire Jack, or my Cyborg Jack, or my Low Drag Jack, I not only have this unique design that I wouldn't have normally collected, but I have a mechanical operation that is unlike everything else in my collection because I don't collect slip joints. They don't excite me, they don't interest me, but the Jack Wolf knives do. So every time I'm getting ready to go out for the day and I'm loading my pockets with all the crap I'm gonna carry, I've always got a folder on me. Sometimes I have a fixed blade to go with that folder and I always have a Jack Wolf slip joint in its slip case in my pocket, always. And I found a staggering amount of uses for those little slip joints. They're, they're wonderfully practical. I love the walk and talk. I love that mechanical feel of, of closing it, hitting that half stop, and then bringing it to a close. And all that is lost here. But what you're getting is what a lot of us would consider standard operation in a standard folding knife, which I, I thought I could reverse flick upside down, which I'm not really all that good at. And along with the fact that you've got a bolster lock, you've got some other new changes. You've got, the, for the very first time, a pocket clip. And he's done a great job by anodizing it in a color to match with the backspacer, which, would, which replicates the look of the back spring on the slip joints, and coordinating that color in with the color of the carbon fiber variation. Now, I've got the purple haze here. I had a hard time choosing between the purple haze and the gold, I'm sorry, the dark matter gold. But it looks fantastic. And honestly, it feels fantastic. That gunstock frame feels really, really nice in the hand. Overall, it's executed with the same degree of perfection that we're used to with all of the slip joints that have come before it. So the question is, is it as special as all of the other knives, because they still all hold a, a significant place in my heart. I carry one every single day. I've always got one within reach somewhere in this house. And 
I've gotten a great degree of enjoyment out of them. And they're entirely different from everything else in my entire collection. This now kind of blurs that line. I have that special Jack Wolf Knives look and feel. However, operationally, it's so different from those. And it falls more in line with a lot of other knives that I have. Is this something that you're really going to use a lot in a huge collection of folders? And only you can decide that. But what I'm going to give you is some of my personal thoughts on it after giving you the highs and lows, pros and cons, and the specs. And we'll see if your opinion aligns with mine and if this is the kind of knife that you feel you absolutely have to have in your collection. Now, my fuzzy little brain right now cannot seem to recall the drop date on this. So I'm actually going to write that right here on the screen so it's not forgotten. Because I don't want to screw that up because when Jack Wolf Knives does their live drops, remember they're not pre-orders, they're live drops at their dealers, all the best colors go immediately. So I don't want you to miss out on one that you think that you're really going to want just because my idiot brain wouldn't let me remember what the drop date was. I want to say what I think it is, but it's going to confuse people. Let's just stick with what I have written on the screen and that'll make things a hell of a lot easier. Now... Let's get into some photography and get into the tabletop portion of the review where you and I can look at this thing up close and personal and make our own decisions. What you doing here, boy? We work for Mr. Tunstall as regulators. We regulate any stealing of his property. We're damn good, too. Mr. Tunstall's got a soft spot for runaways, derelicts, vagrant types. But you can't be any geek off the street. Got to be handy with the steel, if you know what I mean, earn you keep. Okay, I think it's easy to tell from the intro there that I am very conflicted. So I have the excitement of a new Jack Wolf day. I'm always excited about that. That always blows my mind what, what cool shit Benjamin can come up with. However, what I've got here is something that I honestly never expected. I don't know how long Ben has been developing this probably since the very beginning, because it really is a natural progression for the brand to get into standard folding knives. I'm going to go ahead and unbox this in front of you so you can actually see what all comes with it, because it is a little bit different now. So you've got your standard canister with the pog, and you're getting a sticker inside, which I'm not going to spend all this time trying to fish out of there the microfiber cleaning cloth, and there's a special little baggie that we're not used to seeing. So let's get all this stuff out of the way. What, what hurts me, I don't know if I, I guess hurt me might be a bit of a uh, <laughs> dramatic stretch, but what uh, cramps my brain is the fact that every Jack Wolf knife is special and it's unique not only from knife to knife, but across the industry, because they're the only people bringing out a really modern rendition of a traditional slip joint, right? These traditional patterns, these traditional designs and looks with the traditional operation of a slip joint. So that has helped them become wildly successful. Because there are a lot of people that do not like and do not collect slip joints. I've always been among them. So even though there are a number of high quality slip joint makers out there, they're not enjoying the same success that Jack Wolf Knives is. Because they are bringing out something unique. They're speaking more to the people that collect these. Modern, tactical folders with these modern materials titanium, carbon fiber, and all that kind of good stuff. 
So it allows us to have something wildly unique to our collection because we're not normally collecting the slip joints. Now we are, and now we've got this amazing selection of, of various materials and sizes and shapes and blade profiles and all kinds of crazy shit, right? But now, if Jack Wolf is making a folder, now they're competing with the rest of the industry, right? They're a giant in their field right here with these slip joints. They're offering something unique against all the other slip joint makers. But now, I have to take a look at this and put it up against something like this. A small, compact carry manual opener that locks. So I think that changes the whole dynamic. Oh, I still love the feel and the sound of these. I really do. And like I said, you're lacking that here. You don't get that. Now you're going back to flick it open, unlock it, and drop it closed. So now you're competing with so many other knives that have spent a lot of time refining that operation, whether it be a, a flipper or you're doing a manual opening, you're flicking it, whatever you're doing. So now all of a sudden, this classic looking Jack Wolf is going to be competing for pocket time in people's collections against stuff like the EMP EDC Nimble, against the Dawn V2, which I still maintain might be one of the most perfectly designed EDC knives ever made. Just going to get some of the pocket lint off of that hand rub satin blade because it looks terrible on camera. But sorry, I carry and I use my knives and I enjoy them. Now, the other thing is, this is designed to be opened in a multitude of ways. You've got a fuller on this side and a fuller on this side. Yes, you can slow roll it like a Sabenza. You can reverse flick it off of that fuller, which on this knife I prefer to do because you've got the bearings and the pivots, so it's got a nice, fast, snappy action. Or you can front flip it. And here's the trick. You guys know I suck at front flipping, and I hate front flippers. I'm just no good at it. You can see that right there. However, the Dawn V2 was the first one that I had that I really felt a connection to and actually kind of enjoy the front flipping. It's consistent. It's easy to nail every time. So now this is forced to compete with that for me in my collection for what I'm going to carry. And somehow or other, and notice how short that front flipper tab is, it's not protruding an inch above the frame like some companies are doing. They did a really good job with it. Yet, even though it's minuscule, I can flip it pretty damn consistently and very, very snappily. Is snappily a word? It is now. So what I've got here is a knife that sings to me on the level that all Jack Wolfs do, where I've got that double bolster design, and this has the, the, the triple flutes in the top bolster. It's got the look of the back spring. It's got this beautiful, seamless feel across the backside of the knife. But now we're adding jimping to that, and it is effective jimping. It's not overly grabby. It's not sharp, I should say. It is grabby. When you put your thumb into it, you're going to grip into it. And I've got this great look of the dark bee-blasted titanium with the really rich look of the carbon fiber choices that have been offered. Like I said, I chose the purple haze, even though I like that dark matter gold a lot. Man, that gold looked good. So now here's the other thing. Now for the first time, you've got a pocket clip. And that's where this little baggie comes in. Because if you decide, hey, you know what? I want to carry this Jack Wolf like I carry all of my other Jack Wolves in a slip case. doesn't have a pocket clip. I want to take this off. All you've got to do 
is very quickly and easily take the knife apart, just a couple of screws. And then this very tiny filler tab will fill in that gap, that pocket, I should say, that's left behind when the pocket clip comes off. But I honestly think a lot of people are going to carry this like a standard modern pocket knife and they're going to clip it to their pocket and it's going to give them that feeling of, of just like every other folder that they've got. And I really like the color matching that's been done here. And by the way, the purple on this, the anodizing, is a brilliant deep purple. It looks so good. It's just the right pitch of purple. It looks fantastic. Expertly done. Really, really great. So if you decide to, you can easily take the pocket clip off and put this in in its place. And the only reason you're taking the knife apart to do so is uh, Ben did not want any additional exposed hardware aside from what we normally see with the, the hardware that holds the covers on, the pivot, and then now you have this lock bar overextension preventer. <laughs> we'll call it that. Um, anyway, so he didn't want any an extra piece of hardware. Plus, the other thing is when you're putting in this teeny tiny little thing, about 98% of the surface area would be covered with the screw that would hold it in place. So by taking it apart, you have access to the inside of the frame and you can unscrew the pocket clip, pop it off, drop this one on in its place and then screw it in from the inside and you have a clean, seamless look, which I actually really like the look of it without the pocket clip. But for me, I think I'm, I'm probably going to keep the pocket clip on there because that's now going to take me back to my normal everyday life which is carrying a folder clipped in my pocket and then a Jack Wolf slip joint in a slip case down inside of my pocket. So it allows me to kind of maintain what I, what I already do if I leave the pocket clip on there. And it's got the right amount of tension. It goes in and out of the pocket very, very well. A again, as with everything that Ben touches, everything was designed meticulously. It was designed very, very well. I love how the back spacer comes all the way around, just like the back spring does on the slip joints, and comes right up to this front surface here. It is perfectly centered. There's no blade play in any direction, no side to side, no up and down. Again, it does have the bearings at the pivot. So that's the general idea of the knife, and where my conflicts lie on it. I want to always just jump up and down and be super crazy excited every time I open something from Jack Wolf Knives. And I was excited for this, and I still am. It's just, it doesn't feel as special as this. Because what am I up to now? I think I have six. I want to say I have six Jack Wolf slip joints. I'm pretty sure that's correct. So that's only six out of a collection of God knows how many knives. I haven't counted them lately. Don't plan to. Let's say a couple hundred knives. So it's a teeny little, teeny tiny little percentage of my overall collection. So every time a new one comes in, it is obviously very, very exciting. It's not just another flipper that I've got in the mailbox or a, a, some other, a, another folder of some sort. It's always something unique and different. I have that different pull strength on each one. I have that, that distinctive walk and talk. Some are louder than others. Some are more muted than others. There's something so wildly unique about each and every one. As I open that tube, I'm like, I don't know what to expect. I know it's going to be great, but I don't know exactly what to expect here. And now, well, now I just have a folder. But man, it's a really nice folder, isn't it? Oh, it's so cool. And I think... This also may help bridge the gap for people even more. If you only collect modern folders and you're not really big on classic designs, on traditionals, let's say, and you just don't see yourself ever doing slip joints, this might be what helps you start to appreciate classic designs or traditionals. Because now you've got an operation that's similar to many of the other knives that you already collect. 
Doesn't have this modern look. It has this very traditional look, a gentleman's look. And it may give you something to be newly fascinated with. And I think that's exciting all by itself. All right. Let's go back to the format of my videos here. Let's do the TLDW. Too long, didn't watch. For those of you that click on knife reviews and then complain about how long this knife review is and how this guy doesn't stop talking, here are the highlights, the pros and the cons, the highline observations on this particular knife. All right, so we're looking at the Gunslinger Jack, right? And we're looking at a knife that has a lot of pros, but it's hard for me to say what's going to be a pro and a con for you because you're looking at this with new eyes just like I am, going, wait, a traditional slip joint pattern in a bolster lock folder? That's crazy. I don't know how to wrap my mind around that. So let's start with the pros. The pros are, number one, shock value. If you're already a Jack Wolf collector, this is your first non-slip joint from them, and the first time you pull it out and play with it, it's a big shock, you know, kind of like puberty. Another pro is I think they translated this pattern remarkably well into a useful EDC style knife because you've got a great size for EDC here. It's not huge. It's not teeny tiny. It's kind of like that Goldilocks size for a lot of people. So I think a lot of people are going to get a lot of use out of this knife. The ergonomics are another pro. It feels remarkably good in the hand. Whether you're doing a saber grip or a hammer grip, I mean, this isn't a fighting knife, so you're not going to be doing a reverse grip most likely. If you're going to use a pinch grip and get up on it and do some more precision cutting, that clip point is a nice place to rest your index finger. And you've got enough room here on the bolsters to pinch where you've got that support where you can make the slices and make the cuts that you want to make. So it's going to serve you very, very well as a EDC knife or as an EDC knife. Another pro, as with all Jack Wolf knives ever since the low drag jack, is the fact that you've got S90V. And it's a hollow, very thin hollow ground S90V with a really, really nice finish on it. So you've got a steel that will, will require very little maintenance. I don't think that you're going to have to strop it very often. I don't think that you're going to have to resharpen it very often. If you do, you do have a sharpening notch right there. You've got plenty of room to move up that blade profile. So over the years, I think that you're going to get a lot of use out of that blade steel. And going back to the grind, it is as ridiculously, stupidly slicey as the slip joints. So if one thing you've come to love about Jack Wolf knives are the utilitarian nature of the grinds, then you're, you're not going to be disappointed here. This is going to be every bit as useful, slicey, and almost dangerous. Just, just be careful when you're playing with these damn knives. I have cut and nicked myself with my Jack Wolves more times than I care to count. Another pro, the combination of materials, depending on which one you go with, I mean, I should say it doesn't matter which one you go with. They all look fantastic. All of the carbon fiber, carbon fiber, really? All of the carbon fiber variants are fantastic. They look great, great colors. And they all go really well with that dark bead blasted titanium. For me, a big bonus is having the anodized titanium pocket clip an anodized titanium backspacer in a brilliant anodization that really, really goes well with the carbon fiber choices. Now, if you're new to, to anodized titanium, please do remember, um, and you'll see a little sh color shift here in mine from light to dark on the pocket clip, just from handling. If you ever get to a point on any type of anodized titanium where it begins to look a little bit dull or it doesn't pop as much as it used to, all it takes is a little spray of Windex, original formula Windex with ammonia, 
and then wipe it down. It brings the, the vibrancy of the color right back very, very easily. Another pro, it's a bolster lock. It's not a liner lock. It's not a frame lock. You're going to be able to manipulate this just as easily with your left hand as you are with your right hand because you're not applying pressure to a frame lock. The scale is protecting you from that. And this gap, by the way, is a natural byproduct of all bolster locks. You could buy a $10,000 high-end custom bolster lock from any number of makers. And yes, you're going to have that gap because the lock has to move over. I know it's dumb that I'm having to explain that. However, almost every bolster lock video I've done, there are comments or there are messages or emails, people asking why on earth, how cheap is that? There's a big old gap between the scale and the frame. No, there's not, dummy. That's the lock. Cons. My dry ass, look at look how dry my friggin' thumb is, man. That's ridiculous. Sorry about that. Sorry you're having to witness that live and in person uh, or live on video. Okay, now, what cons may be on this knife? Well, I think for a lot of people, they're going to look at this and go, man, at $350, it puts it in a little bit of competition with some very well-established and popular folders that are already out there on the market. So they're jumping into the deep end, man. They are really jumping in on the deep end. And I hope it's a success for them because I think that this is a fantastic knife. And it is something that I would suggest to all my personal friends. Add this to your collection. Just have something wildly different and wonderfully useful. But that could be a con for a lot of people. They might look at a lot of other more, I don't want to say traditional because that's going to become a confusing term in the context of this video, but uh, more of these modern folders that we're all looking at, this is priced very close to a lot of them. Not, not the one I'm holding. This is a lot more expensive, but here, the, uh, the Dawn was, is not too far off in the price point. And you might look at that and go, I could justify that amount of money on this because it's something that I'm, I'm, I'm used to buying. I'm used to looking at these particular things as I'm purchasing that knife and this ticks all those boxes. And this is so wildly different. I'm taking a leap of faith. I'm doing something outside of my comfort zone by ordering this. So I get that. It may be a little bit harder for some people to justify the $350. Okay, any other cons I can think of? Honestly, not really. It's, I mean, it's lightweight. It's got a nice action. Okay, let's talk about the action. So you have ceramic bearings. It is a perfectly tuned detent. Great, crisp flickability that still somehow really, really good for slow rolling if you choose to do that. It's not such a tight detent that when you go to pop it and it breaks the detent that it kind of pops the blade out there and then you follow through and hit the blade. Um, however, if we're going to stay on cons, you've got your collection that you're used to buying into with these Super smooth, even drop shutty knives that while that is not an indication of quality, it's become something that you've enjoyed over time, right? You've got probably 20 knives in your collection that you can flick open like that and that blade just wiggle, wiggle, wiggles right on down. And while it may not be an indication of quality, you really enjoy that. You're not going to get this here. It is going to have that same wonderful opening, but takes a bit more effort if you were doing that. But again, in your normal everyday life, that's not how you're closing a knife. You're closing a knife like this. Or if you're a two-handed kind of guy, you're doing this. It is not glass smooth. You, Oops, sorry about that. You do feel... The detent ball 
writing on the Ricasso. Hopefully that's not going to bother a lot of people. Doesn't really bother me. Matter of fact, it wasn't really something I even really noticed until I started looking for it. Because that's kind of my job here is to dissect everything, give you the pros and the cons, tell you what's good, tell you what's bad. So I have to pay a lot of attention, a lot of really sometimes insignificant little things to most people. So that's pretty much it for the TLDW, the pros and the cons. Let's get into the specs because they, of course, are important. I'm going to change up the way I do specs a little bit and see if you guys like it. Please leave a comment down below if you do or you don't so I know where to go for future videos. What I typically do is I put up the specs right here and then I talk through them point by point by point and that could take a couple of minutes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop the specs up on the screen and then they're just going to be there for a couple of seconds. You can pause it and read them for yourself. If you would prefer I narrate them one by one like I've done for so many years, I'm happy to do it, but please let me know down below. But this saves a lot of runtime. That overall video length can be shortened by probably a good two to four minutes if I'm not individually reading all of the specs. But they were there on your screen. You have a pause button. You know what to do. Okay, so now my personal thoughts on the Gunslinger Jack. Aside from all the stuff that I mentioned before where I feel it like it's competing against a whole industry full of traditional manual folders. The way I feel about the knife overall, this is absolutely a knife I'm going to be EDCing for a while. It's got a really nice ergonomic feel. I love how this thing feels. It's wonderfully lightweight. I mean, 2.9 ounces. The only modern sized or EDC sized, I should say, modern folder that I have that weighs less is the Avian Knives Atlas. And that is absurdly lightweight for its size and, and it's because of the way it was designed and built. This is really, really nice. This is not going to be burdensome for anyone at 2.9 ounces. I mean, that's just nutty. You could be wearing friggin' running shorts and pop this bad boy in there and it's not gonna feel like a burden. The flickability and the action, I really dig. It feels nice and snappy. It pops right open, it feels really nice. If I had a personal suggestion from me to Ben, uh, even though they did a really nice job with that chamfer there on the bolster lock, I really would have liked to have seen a little bit of relief cut on the show side to give you easier access over into that lock. Because right now you are having to jam your thumb in there to get that to unlock. And let's face it, this is a different world than slip joints. It's, it's a lot of different needs and requirements for a lot of people. And for many, many, many vocal people, they're, they're going to tell you that they want to have a cutout right there that's just a little bit cut back so you can just very easily swipe your thumb across the lock and it catches the lock instead of just gliding across it. So, a little bit of constructive feedback there for Ben, which I know that he will consider. And if it works for his designs, I would see him doing it. If it makes his design look awful, he's certainly not going to do it. But... I mean, I think overall, he did a fantastic job. And whatever factory overseas he's using, because again, that is a proprietary secret of his. Um, he's very upfront to say, yep, they're made in China, but he's not giving out the information of the OEM because he doesn't want everybody and their brother going there and then clogging up the pipeline where he can't get his, his production done the way that he needs to get it done in a timely manner. So I don't know who's doing it, but they did a really, really good job. Again, it's not glass smooth on the open and close, but I think that's okay because not every knife really needs to be. This is a wonderful EDC utilitarian style knife with a super sharp hollow ground blade that I think is going to become a practical accomplice for a lot of people. 
It's non-offensive, non-obtrusive, lightweight, good cutting, and well-made all the way around. Ben should be proud, and for those of us that are collecting Jack Wolf knives, uh, this is something that you have to have in your collection. Even if you don't feel that you're going to carry it as an EDC, that you're not going to carry it three, four, five, seven times a week like you do with your slip joints, I think that it really is the perfect partner to go with your Jack Wolf Knives collection because it fits right in. It really, really fits right in. And the thing is, I was actually going to borrow um, a knife from Ben and I forgot to follow up and I think he had forgotten that I asked, but the original, oh God, I just uh, the sharpshooter is the gun stock design as well. And I kind of wanted to put them side by side for people to see them and see how well executed this was and how until you actually open the knife and start playing with it, it it's going to seem a lot like that original slip joint. But just by looking at the pictures, I think it really, it pays homage to that first design very, very well. It follows in the footsteps very, very well. And I think it's a good way to introduce this new variant of knife into Jack Wolf Knives inventory. So anyway, even though I couldn't do that side-by-side -side comparison, um, I, I, I do see ob the obvious lineage. I, I think it's a, it's a great homage, and I think it's a great way to follow it up. So well done, guys. Fantastic job. Beautiful knife. Feels great. Works great. Carries great. What more could you ask for? All right, that's it for me. I'm out of here for now. I'll see you guys on the next video.